All right, we're live. Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Raymond here from the Raymond Report with uh, Ross Benjamin, and uh, I'd like to bring on Ross right now and uh, see how uh, our resident handicapper here is doing. How you doing, Ross? How was your weekend? I'm great, great. Uh, you know, Fourth of July, not your ordinary Fourth, as you know. Same thing in Canada with uh, uh, Canada Day. Uh, you know, with all the COVID restrictions, but nice, relaxing Fourth of July weekend and had a lot of time to reflect on our show here and improve it every time we get out there. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you one thing. My, my honey-do list is, uh, is getting, uh, is getting <laughs> tackled at it. Yeah, you know, you, know, you picking, feel like a doctor on call, right? Yeah, yeah I'm just picking out one chore right after the other. And <laughs> this weekend was uh, the, at the, uh, the cottage uh, fixing uh, some stairs. So, uh, you know what, good relaxing weekend. Good to, to get, the, you know. Uh, at the lake and uh, some little quiet time and uh, no, it was a good weekend. Uh, enjoyed some sunshine, good weather this weekend. And uh, man, I'll tell you one thing, Ross, I I'm, uh, I'm mitching for some sports. I'll take it any day now. Yeah. I mean, I, we were talking about this off air. Look, I mean, in the grand scheme of things right now with all the problems we have in the world with this COVID-19 mess, um, sports is really, you put things in perspective, right, Ron? Oh, absolutely. I mean, sports is sort of unimportant in the grand scheme of things. But by the same token, we're at the point now, if you want people to have restrictions and be staying at home, give them something to at least watch on TV. And you know damn well there's a lot of sports fans out there. And uh, I'm a little biased, and so are you. Yeah, and, you know, as much as I love to watch old games, it's just – when you know the results and you've probably seen the game five times. <laughs> yeah, when you, when you try to put a bet on one of those and you lose, that's when it's time to really yeah, come. I don't need to be reminded five times I lost that bet. <laughs> I, th I think I've watched every movie that's been made since 1975 by now. Man, oh, man. Come on. That's give awesome. me some sports, you know. Well, Ross, today on the uh, Rain Report, what we're going to do, uh, keeping with our, um, our structure with the website. And, and, folks, if you are new to the Rain Report, um, I'm Ron Raymond. Uh, he's uh, Ross Benjamin, and we've been in the industry uh, quite a few years, eh, Ross? Um, yeah. You know, I've been doing this since 1996. I know you've been uh, since when? 2003. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of experience between us, and uh, with that experience comes a lot of uh, stories, right? And um, one thing before we get into some of our stories, let's talk about where people can find the, the podcast, Ross. Yeah, they can find it at our o at OSGA YouTube channel or at is it ATSStats.com? Yeah, yeah ATS Stats or the Rain Report uh, YouTube channel, and we'll, we'll post that on our website too. Yeah, and I would appreciate it, folks. You know, give us a little lift here. Subscribe to either channel or both, and you'll be notified right away upon us uh, publishing any of our future shows. And you can find, you know, if you miss a show, you can find all the archives there. And if you like today's video or future videos, be nice enough to give us a like. It helps keep us inspired. Not that we need a lot of inspiration, but it's added incentive. Yeah, absolutely. And, and folks, if you, um, if you missed the first two shows, we, in the first show, we went over the AFC East. And in the second show, we did the NFC East. So um, today we're going to go through the AFC North. But uh, before we do that, you can find our podcast, uh, like Ross said, on YouTube. Just uh, uh, search uh, OSGA or uh, Raymond Report. And also on where you uh, download your favorite uh, podcast, right? On either uh, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Anywhere you download your uh, podcast, you just type in the Raymond Report and uh, we should be able to pop up. Now, uh, Ross... When we started this uh, show uh, last week, you know, one thing we always wanted to do is pay compliments to the past and, and show a bit of our history of where we came from. And, um, you know, before we get into the, um, our favorite websites where we start visiting, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, ATS Stats. And, and if people who don't know about ATS Stats or the Rain Report, um, it's a pretty good website. And if you're into horse racing, which a lot of people are uh, probably doing uh, either on the weekends or I'm just going to share something here, Ross. You let me know if you see this. Uh, I'm going to share the screen. And um, all right, uh, share. You see that, Ross? Yes, I do. Okay, so uh, if uh, you go to the website and you're looking for free horse racing tip sheet, uh, go to horses, go to free tip sheet. And uh, each and every day we uh, generate uh, tips on uh, tip sheet. And today's uh, Hastings race course in Vancouver is the tip sheet of the day. And um, we give you races one to seven today for July 7th. And uh, also, if you go inside the uh, premium section, uh, we have a tip sheet on 
all of the tracks going today for July 7th, Aropo Park, Assiniboia Downs, Belterra Park, uh, all the main tracks here, uh, Indiana Grand, Lone Star, Louisiana Down, um, you know, the weekends is all the big ones, Gulfstream, Belmont. So if you're into horse racing uh, and you're looking for a tip sheet, uh, give us a shot here at ATSStats.com. All right, Ross, uh, now we're going to talk about a bit of our history, where we came from. And um, do you, is the uh, share screen done? I think so, eh? Yeah. I think you okay. Um, Ross, do you remember the first website you ever uh, attended when you, when you first got, got online? Well, I mean, I used to follow the prescription, um, and I, I don't know if you want to consider that a website, right? Well, yeah, it was a website. What am I talking about? Yeah. It was a forum. Um, well, before a lot of the forums developed, they were pretty much the innovator, right, Ron? And, uh, and I, yeah, again, I keep mentioning Mark Lawrence ever since I got a hold of that Playbook magazine, which I've had every year for probably the last 25 years. I always followed his site as well and the expert handicappers he had on his site. I always found uh, the information there very intriguing. Uh, we were talking, um, I, there was two gentlemen that used to do actually an audio show. They were well ahead of their time, you know, what we consider an audio podcast now. Uh, and I was so intrigued listening to them, to them. They used to do a show on a Monday when the lines first came out. And then they'd show, uh, show later in the week where they uh, would look at the line moves and, and then they would discuss who they like for that week. And you... Do you yeah. remember those two guys' yeah. names? Yeah, so um, I remember the, the prescription. Uh, Ken Weisner was the uh, the founder of The Shrink. They used to call him The Shrink. Uh, he was there. Uh, the, you know, the, the, he had a lot of guests. He had Chris Costigian, the Sting, uh, back in the day. He still has his website at Gambling911. Um, those were guys that started out uh, at the prescription. But, uh, yeah, they were, the prescription was the first ever website I ever uh, I remember um, was Better's World. I don't know if you remember a site called Better's World. Brian, yeah. I think the guy's name was Brian Georgia. Uh, I think he was from Hartford. I'm not sure around the, either New York or Hartford around that area. But Better's World was uh, one of the first sites. The prescription, Vegas Insider, Gambling 911, uh, MajorWager.com, Mad Jack Sports. I don't know if you remember Mad Jack. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the sports form. You get a lot of traffic, boy. Oh, yeah. And, and you know what? Um, Phoenix sports was also my website where it was a, a sports forum. And we, we were up there with Matt Jacks and the shrink and uh, major wager. And, uh, yeah, I remember those days, uh, of my, my first website and, um, you know, some of them are still going today. I did a little, uh, scan last night. Uh, obviously things have changed. Uh, but a lot of these sites are still online and uh, good for those guys for, uh, keep chugging along here. Yeah, I remember a guy named Craig Tenney. You remember him? Yeah, Craig Tenney. The guy was a bundle of energy. Um, wasn't really a great handicapper, but he was entertaining to listen to. And if anything, like when we do our show, right? I mean, yeah. look, you need to win. You need to give the, the uh, listeners substance to what you're talking about. Uh, otherwise, you sound just like every other guy trying to uh, perform a podcast online with all due respect. Um, but he taught me that you need to entertain a little bit. Okay. But not as much as he did. Oh, yeah. he got a little carried away. God rest his soul. He's not with us anymore, but the site he had, he had, uh, he had Jimmy Vaccaro on it, the former bookmaker, Steve Merrill, who's now still around back then. But yeah, yeah those are fond memories in this, the, uh, the small steps that led me toward what we're doing right now. Well, you know, you talk about characters, uh, you know, Dennis Hill, King of the Hill was a yeah, character in the industry. We to work with him, you know. Yeah, uh, Greg Dempson. Um, there used to be a guy in Boston. <laughs> yeah, Kent. <laughs> one of the funniest uh, guys I know. You just mentioned the name Greg Dempson and you just can't help but laugh there. Uh, uh, AKA Nick Danger when he hits the... Uh, yeah, my the, wife finally had enough of him when he called one night at 1135 at night. <laughs> And yeah. it was not like a Tuesday. It wasn't like I was up watching sports and he wanted to, he, could you look this up for me? And, and she goes, will you tell that guy that he's on the West coast and we're on the East coast? You know? Yeah. When he's on karaoke tour there, he, <laughs> he'd come back, he'd come back and he'd be at the 19th hole at his place there. And he'd be just, you know, giving you a call, trying to fix your, your database at three in the morning. It's like, <laughs> You know, my database, uh, I'll, I'll get to that in the morning, Greg. Hey, look, really before, we, before we get to the meat and potatoes, Ross, let me tell you a joke. I mean, every time, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what, though? But the, I used yeah. to have this guy in Boston. His name was The Chef. And uh, what a great guy he was, Billy Capone. And uh, 
we, we, got, we just hit it off and he, and he kept sending me like uh, lobsters <laughs> from, from, from the, down the, from Boston. Nice. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And he was just, uh, you know, appreciative of all the work we've done. We helped him with his websites and the stuff like that. And uh, he, he was a great guy too, the, the chef. And he was pretty popular in the forum. Everybody, you know, he, he used to have this saying, right? Um, well, he goes, uh, oh, God, he'll come to me in a second. Uh, but he, he used to have all these great sayings on the forums and kill him with kindness. He just had to, he would always say, kill him with kindness. And uh, he used to post his picks on the line and, you know, it'd always be late steam moves. So, um, yeah, hopefully he's doing well. I hope he's still with us. Uh, but uh, you know what? If you're watching today on uh, YouTube or uh, the podcast and you remember some of these uh, characters or websites and you want to share that with us for our next show, give us a, uh, an email uh, at our website at ATSStats.com or you can contact at uh, rbwins.com and, and let us know some of the, the guys that you remember in this industry and we'll bring it up on our next show. Yeah, and, and I, if I could add in here, yeah, um, sure. our YouTube channels where the videos are posted, feel free to comment, folks. Ask questions. Let us know how you like the show. Um, of course, sometimes you're going to disagree what we have to say. As long as you keep it respectful, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. So feel free. I encourage, We encourage you to uh, comment on our videos. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, another thing uh, the chef we used to say is let the chips fall where they may. You yep. give a pick and he said, let the chips fall where they may. So, Ross, um, Sports Handicapping 101 is the segment here on the Rain Report, which we do each and every uh, day, which uh, you can download our podcast at uh, any of your uh, favorite uh, places you download the podcast. And what we do in this segment is we talk a bit about the past, and we also get, we finish it off with a sports betting tip. And what I'm going to share here today, Ross, is a, a tip that I wrote in my book in uh, 2009. I call it the Mano Mano Under Pitching Matchup. And, uh, you know, Mano Mano is a uh, bull riding term or bull, uh, bull fighting term that, uh, you know, I looked up. And um, what it is is this Mano Mano pitching um, uh, angle is that you want to get two pitchers from uh, South America, or it could be like Dominican Republic, um, Costa Rica, or, or anywhere, um, you know, like Pedro Martinez was from Dominican. And any time he would go up against another Dominican pitcher, especially if it was a pitcher from his hometown, oh man, you don't think that was buzzing back home in the local radio and TV stations and who's winning and everybody listened to that game. And then those two guys knew that and they would pitch their hearts out. And you knew they would give you seven, eight good innings. And uh, I always use that angle. Uh, anytime I see t uh, two pitchers from South America or Latin America, and they come from the same say, village or, or city or wherever they come from the same country, and there's a, a little bit of history between them, um, that's where I like to play the under in that game. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that makes that's a lot of sense because you're, you, you figure they're going to be more amped up than they normally are, right? Oh, exactly. exactly. And like you said, everybody watching at home, there's pride at stake. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's something I never looked at. I'm going to take a glance at that when situations like that come up this year. Yeah, part of the, uh, like, again, the rain report, there's just three things I talk about. Uh, value, the percentage play, and the situational handicapping. And that falls into that core, uh, category of situational handicapping, uh, the emotions part of it. Sure does. You got Ross? Yeah, well, you know, I – I would say, look at folks, don't get too caught up with ERA as opposed to whip. And uh, for those of you not familiar with the term, um, a lot of novices out there, uh, it's walks plus hits divided by innings pitched. In other words, if a pitcher uh, pitched five innings on that particular day and he gave up six hits and walked four, you add the hits and the walks together, which adds up to 10, and you divide it by the five, it gives you a whip of 2.00, which is terrible, by the way. So, I, you know, you show me a pitcher that has a really good ERA, but a high whip run. Yeah. It's an indicator to me, this guy's getting out of a lot of jams. Sooner or later, he's going to get tagged. You know, there's yeah. a red alert there. Now, what I like to do too, Ron, is I like to look at each starting pitcher's last three starts. And if, there, if you get a situation where one starting pitcher has a whip of 1.30 or less, yep. and he's going against another starting pitcher who has a whip of greater than 1.50, okay. that's an indicator to me. 
Then I look at their strikeout to walk ratio. Um, a very good strikeout to walk ratio over the last three starts is four to one or better. Okay. And if he's going against a starting pitcher over his last three starts, that's walked more than he struck out. Yeah. It, it really, you, it, you increase your value in that situation based on the odds. Okay. Right. Now right. you're going to get situations where that comes up and the team is minus 200. So that takes the value away unless you're willing to go to the run line. You yeah. know, so hey, these are all indicators, right? Ron, we yeah. talked about this the other day. Indicators, are for you to start taking a serious look at, at a game. Yeah, and, and I'm sure it's good with totals too. Um, yeah. You know, you can look at the you know, and the law of average, right? Whatever the, you know, his whip is and his ERA, you just, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you got two pitchers with a very good whip over the last three starts, less than one, and you're looking at a total of eight or more, uh, which is, you're, it's rarefied error in that situation. But that's a good example, I mean, of what I would look for using whip against the total. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, no, I'm going to keep an eye on that one for sure, Ross. All right. So, um, again, folks, if you're listening to us for the first time, you can find us on YouTube, uh, either the OSGA uh, YouTube or on the uh, Rain Report YouTube channel or wherever you download your favorite podcast. And uh, today we're going to talk football, Ross, like we've done the first two weeks. And if you've missed the first couple of uh, shows, we've talked about the AFC East and the NFC East. Today, we're going to dive into the, uh, the still curtain division with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the AFC North. Now, Bookmaker uh, came out and uh, posted their um, AFC North, uh, you know, money line to win the division. Um, no no uh, surprise here that Baltimore minus 240, Pittsburgh Steelers plus 460, uh, the Bengals at uh, 2650, and uh, – the X Factor team in this division, the uh, Cleveland Browns, plus 460. Now, Ross, the uh, Baltimore Orioles have an over-under of season wins of 11 and a half. Baltimore uh, Ravens. Uh, sorry, did I, what did I go? Orioles? I, you, I, you, got, you got me in the whip in ERA. Yeah, we're thinking. talking about baseball, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ron, football mode. Let's go, buddy. All right. Anyway. And, uh, so the Baltimore Ravens, uh, over-under at 11 and a half. And then we got the Pittsburgh, uh, not the Pirates, but the Steelers, at <laughs> over nine and a half. Uh, Cincinnati over five and a half, almost like the Jets. Well, it wasn't the Jets five and a half too? And uh, Cleveland Browns uh, over under at eight and a half. So um, we're going to break down each uh, division here, each team in the division, and uh, we're going to kick it off with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Ross, uh, gone through the schedule. Uh, before I get to that, though, I'm going to talk about the Baltimore's offense last year. Uh, Let's, let's be honest. That offense went through Lamar Jackson. This guy did everything. You know, he led the team in rushing and passing. Um, you know, there, there is one thing that, uh, you know, I'll talk about that in a second, is, uh, you know, a lack of a, uh, you know, a good uh, go-to. Remember I keep talking about our triplets? Yeah. And, and, uh, and I keep thinking, you know, who's the go-to receiver in this offense? And last year it was uh, the tight end, Mark Andrews. Yeah. But, um, you know, somebody's got to step up at the wide receiver position I know they got Marquise Brown, Willie Sneed, Miles Boykin, but uh, you need that that one deep threat or that one go-to, you know, that Odell type guy, right? Um, and I and I just don't see it right now. And but hey, what am I to say? They they, they won the, the AFC North uh, last year, uh, but again, uh, Lamar Jackson played a huge role. If Lamar Jackson goes down, you know, uh, RG three is up, and, and then maybe we're not talking about uh, Baltimore Ravens right now. Um, in their offense last year, Ross. Second total yards in offense with 6,521. The only offense that was better was Dak uh, Prescott and the Cowboys at 6,904. Now, they led the league in rushing at 3,296. Uh, but here's, you know, the, the, um, the yin and the yang type thing. Yeah. Very good rushing team, not a very good passing team. Only ranked 27th, um, 3,225 yards. But, uh, again, it, if you play good defense and you run the football, like I said last show, you, win, you can win championship with that, uh, that recipe. Yeah, um, but, you know, here, here's the thing that we need to put an asterisk up there. Um, during that 12-game win streak at the end of the year where they were totally dominant, uh, yeah, you run the ball successfully, but they were playing with the lead for the majority of that time. I, I can't remember the numbers, but they were astronomical as far as the percentage of time in those games that Baltimore had the lead. And we saw what happened in the last two years in the playoffs, Ron. 
Yep. You know what I mean? They got behind in those games, and it's a whole different entity when you when all of a sudden you're you're in obvious passing situations. So, yeah, I mean, give them credit for running the ball as well as they did, right? And there's also another asterisk. Yeah, they ran for over three thousand yards. Twelve hundred were by their quarterback, you know, which is ungodly. And I just don't know if that's sustainable, Ron. Yeah, and Harbaugh's a good coach. And uh, you bring up a good point. Now you're going to bring up the coach Ron in me now. Um, teams that go ahead like that and, and always have leads, um, when you're ranked 27th in passing, you don't do well uh, you know, in, in a comeback situation. You're down 14 points, down uh, 17 points. The odds of a, of a team like Baltimore coming back, um, you know, you got to throw the ball. Um, you run to win and you throw to uh, score. That's one uh, thing I've learned at a coach's clinic once, and it always stuck with me. You run a win, you, you pass the score. And uh, looking at the um, this uh, this uh, this uh, offense, you know, you're right. If they go if they go ahead and they put on points, and then they just play good defense and run the ball. And when you run the ball, you control the clock. Yep. And and, and when you control the clock and you play great defense, and you're not, and if you're always ahead, then you, you really don't, you know, don't have to worry about it. But you know, I can tell you one thing. Um, you know, the, I'm sure the DC is like, you know what, you, you better keep this lead because uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we have to, and the, or the OC says, you know, if we have to start throwing the ball around and our top receiver is the tight end, we're in trouble. Um, yeah, and like they say, the best defense sometimes is, is your offensive running game. You know? well, yeah, quarterback's best friend's running game. That's uh, exactly, you're absolutely right, Ross. Yeah. And defensively, obviously, you know, great defense, fourth total yards last year fifth versus the rush, sixth versus the pass. Um, but they were only third in division versus the pass. I found that a little interesting doing the, uh, um, the, the math here. Uh, third in points against uh, in the league, 282. And um, third, uh, 17.6 points against. Now, looking at the last year, 14 and two, seven and one uh, home and away, five and one in the division, 10 and two in the conference. Um, looking at uh, their schedule right here, now, the over-under is set at 11 and a half. I got them winning 12 games this year, Ross. And looking at this schedule right here, just like the Dallas Cowboys, when you got uh, marquee uh, players um, like the uh, Lamar Jacksons, um, you're going to get a lot of attention from the, the SPMs, the NFL Networks, the Thursday and Sunday crew, right, ABC um, or NBC uh, with Al Michaels and, and the slide in with uh, Collinsworth. Um but, you know, five primetime games, you know, they, they faced the Chiefs uh, on September 28th, and then they got New England on uh, Sunday, November 15th, and then they got three primetime games from week 12 to week 14. Now, this is going to be very interesting. They got at Pittsburgh, November 26th, Thursday night uh, against the Dallas Cowboys at home, and then, you know, whatever happens with Cleveland this year, on Monday night or with Cleveland, division game. So, Two division games on, um, you know, three primetime um, scheduled games. That could be uh, very interesting uh, for the uh, Baltimore um, Ravens this year. And, and they finished the season with four breathers. We talked about the Hal Mummy breather uh, opponents. Uh, you know, they, they finished with Cleveland, depending, uh, could be a breather or not. Jacksonville, the Giants, and then the Bengals. So um, start the season strong. Uh, with uh, Cleveland, Houston, uh, Kansas City, Washington, Cincinnati, but uh, Philly and Pittsburgh before the bye. And then, uh, like I said, they, they uh, have four breathers down the uh, to finish the season. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, well, I, there's two ways that I measure strength of schedule. Um, and I'm not a brain surgeon when I come up with this. They're pretty basic. Uh, you stayed at a Hotel Six last night, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, one of them is to look at uh, what their opponents' records were, their future opponents' records were the season before, cumulative record. And that tells me, okay, these are the teams they're facing. These are what these teams' record was a season ago combined. And when you look at that formula, Ron, they're playing the easiest schedule in the NFL. Uh, this year, which is mind-boggling considering what 14 and two last year. And right. then the other way, Ron, is I look at, I'll take one sports book that's a reliable, incredible sports book. I'll look at all of Baltimore's opponents, for example, and add up the regular season win totals odds. So in other words, Cincinnati is at five and a half. Cleveland is at 
uh, seven or eight, whatever it is, and I'll add those up. Now, by adding those up, I look at Baltimore's opponents this year, and it adds up to 138 or 128.5, excuse me, which is the eighth easiest in the league. Okay. okay. So based on both of those formulas, their schedule is pretty favorable. And then what I'll do is I'll turn around and say, okay, this team won 14 games a season ago. Their regular season win totals odds are 11 and a half. Wow. Okay. I don't know. You can't make it much higher than that, but by the same token, um, using the adage that I've brought up several times in the first two shows, thinking like a bookmaker, they don't give money away. No. So, I mean, when I look at those numbers, winning 14, easy schedule, why is it 11 and a half? Why isn't it 12 or 12 and a half? I'm going to go under 11 and a half regular season wins on Baltimore, 11 and five, 10 and six. Um, it just looks too obvious to me. You know what I mean? It, it, when it's, when it looks too good, it normally isn't right Ron, when it comes to sports betting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If it looks like a duck, laughs like a duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it is a duck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't always work out that way. No, right? no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, uh, no, you're right. Uh, and looking at the schedule, Ross, um, and I, when I look at the schedule, I, I like to see, okay, which quarterback is going to beat me in this in this schedule? Well, you know, and looking at their – and you said they, they got a favorable schedule. And look at, you know, the, the quarterbacks they're going to face uh, starting, say, uh, week 12. Like, we don't know the situation with Ben Rosberg, if he's going to be healthy enough to, to go all year. Dak Prescott should be okay. Uh, Baker Mayfield, big year for Baker this year. It's just, you know, he's, uh, you know, Puber get off the, 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 the toilet type thing. Um, you know, he's got to really show up here. Um, Jacksonville, Giants, and the Bengals. So um, there's not a lot of uh, situations here that really, the quarterback situation that really scare me off those teams. You know, you got the Colts with Phillip Rivers going to be there now. Um, Cam Newton at, at New England. But Cam Newton, again, uh, what's he going to be like? He's getting yeah. up there in age. I think he's 31. Um, he doesn't have the wheels he used to have, not like a Lamar Jackson. Uh, so 14 um, games a season yeah. ago due to injury. Uh, didn't have the benefit of an off season uh, to, via mini camps and all that kind of stuff with New England to learn a new offense. Um, you know, so there, there's a lot to be factored there with New England. I, I got Baltimore right before the – so they got seven games before the bye – and I got a nice little record for uh, Baltimore before the bye, Ross. Uh, when the Baltimore Ravens are a home team as a favorite uh, uh, before a bye, so in week seven, they're facing the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers at home. They're four and one against the spread. So that might be a nice little spot uh, for Baltimore. Yeah. But um, looking at who they're playing, now they got Cleveland week one, should be a win. In my, it may be, we'll, we'll, you know, should be. They're at home against Cleveland. Houston, at Houston, that's a question mark. Kansas City, I got to give that to the Chiefs. Uh, should beat Washington. Should beat uh, Cincinnati. Um, uh, Philly's going to be a hard one to win, and then they should beat uh, Pittsburgh. So I got them four and three prior to the uh, the bye. But then it gets really easy for them. Uh, Colts, New England. You know, at uh, at New England, who knows what New England's going to be like? Though, but you know, it's a Belichick team. You know, they're going to be strong defense, and um, you know, the offense is going to be a uh, uh, work in progress. But McDonald's still there. Um, Tennessee should be a win. Steelers. Now, the thing with division teams like the Steelers, I'm always like that one and one away. I always feel when teams like Baltimore and Pittsburgh, they should win their home games, but it's tough for them to win two, um, you know, the games in the division against a tough, tough teams like the Steelers and Baltimore. I always, you know, um, I look at the, the, um, the, the Ravens and the Steelers back, um, you know, the defensive days. I still have that in my mind when I still think Ray, I still think Ray Lewis. I think uh, Paul Mal, Harrison, uh, you know, Ed Reed, all those guys, that, that black and blue division, uh, those type teams, right? Um, so, and, and speaking of that, Ross, and I'll get to that in a second, 34 defenses. The, the Baltimore Ravens play a 34 defense, so do the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Cleveland doesn't, and neither does uh, the Bengals. Looking at the, uh, the teams in the NFL this season, there's 14 teams that play a 34 defense. And, and um, the, the top uh, five teams, New England, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, the Jets play a 34 defense, ranked seventh last year. Chicago plays a 30, uh, 34 defense. They rank eighth. And then you got Denver uh, rounding off the uh, top, top uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, the top five 
uh, Denver, uh, sorry, Chicago, one, two, three, four, five, Chicago. So uh, five of the eight top teams uh, play a 34 defense. And as a, a you know a coach, uh, former coach and offense coordinator, I can tell you when I was facing a 34 defense that week, I wouldn't sleep that whole night. And people would say, well, why? What's wrong? What's wrong with a 34 defense? You, you, it's the offensive line. It, the, the, a 34 defense, because the first thing an offense coordinator will do when he draws up plays, his default defense will always draw up is a 43 defense. Four down linemen, three linebackers, um, or, 40, or 42. Um, 43, but in the, the you know, Canadian football, we have 12 men. So um, in the NFL, when you face a 34 defense, those two inside uh, guards, and the center, that's where the confusion lies. Because if you get those two defensive ends pinching in, I'll tell you, those outside linebackers can come screaming in. So, you know, the 34 defense is a nightmare. Yeah, I now. mean, and if I can interject, Brent, oh, I absolutely. mean, ask you this question. I mean, it becomes even more complicated where in most instances in the NFL, especially your um, – two outside linebackers in your 34 are capable of putting their hand in the ground and becoming a pass rusher, or you could substitute a, a big nickel for an outside linebacker in third and medium and third and large. So there's a lot of variations off that, that, yeah, I, I could see why it would give you nightmares. Correct. Oh, absolutely. And then you look at those top, I mentioned those top five defense of uh, 34 defense. Listen to the coordinators, Belichick, Martindale, Keith Butler at uh, Steelers, Greg Williams and Chuck Pagano. Like th that, there's a reason why th those, and you know, you talk about Patriots, Baltimore, Steelers, the Jets, Chicago, although the Jets, you know, last couple of years, they're, you know, you know uh, but still good defense. And the, yeah. the Bears, that's what they're known, like identity. And when you talk about those teams, I always say, what's an identity of a team? And when you think of Patriots, Baltimore, Steelers, Jets, Chicago, um, you know, obviously with uh, Brady gone, it's not the offense anymore. The identity of those top five teams are going to be the defense. And uh, to me, defense uh, wins championships. And, uh, you know, we can spend about an hour talking about the Baltimore Ravens defense here. Yeah, I mean, and again, one other point that, that we should bring up is that, um, you know, in Baltimore and Pittsburgh's instance, the continuity in the coaching stats. Yeah. I mean, uh, you're Dude. looking at Mike Tomlin going into his 14th year. And before then was Bill Cower, who was around for a similar time frame. And yep. in Baltimore's case, um, it, this will be, I believe, John Harbaugh's 15th season as Baltimore's head coach. And prior to that was uh, that gentleman who was there for a long time. He's now on TV. What the heck was his oh, name? Sorry. What, uh... The prior head coach with Baltimore. He was there for a while as well. He won a Super Bowl in 2000. Oh, Billick. Bellick, yeah, yeah, Brian Bellick. Brian yep. Bellick, yeah. So, I mean, continuity in coaching staffs, right, Ron, is, oh, is a big reason why you, you stay to the same schemes. Yeah. And it's an easier transition from year to year for players and familiarity. And if you if you start bungeeing your DCs, and I'll tell you one thing, as soon as you start throwing it, players gravitate to coaches. And if you get a good DC that everybody loves and, you know, the, you understand his system – like I look at the top, like I'm looking at the rankings here for the 34 defense, and I'll I'll, I'll mention the, the 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 bottom four: the Giants, Houston, Dolphins, and Arizona. Um, so Giants ranked 25th, Houston, Houston. Now here's a playoff team ranking 28th. They made a DC change. They got Anthony Weaver. He was the D line coach uh, with the team last year. Um, you know, to me, is that the problem in in Houston? Uh, we'll see this year. Miami Dolphins. Josh Boyer getting the uh, getting the shot here. He was the DB coach here with the Dolphins last year, and then you got Vance Johnson, um, who has been there since 2019 with the uh, Cardinals. He was the head, remember him as the head coach of the uh, yeah. Denver Broncos. So um, yeah. continuity, like you're talking, Ross. When you get continuity in the defense and you keep your same guys, you see, and you, you, but obviously you're you know you're like Bill Parcell would say, your record is what your record says yeah, you are. Exactly. And and if you don't, and if you don't win football games, what did Jerry Glanville used to say? The NFL stats were not for long. Not for long. Yep. And, and you won't be here not for long if you don't. And the problem with games. Houston isn't their defensive coordinator is they got a head coach who's calling the shots who's got, got a screw loose. You know, you know so. I, I've, co I've coached with coaches like that, and I can tell you, Ross, uh, I used to be a, co a head coach and an offense coordinator, and I can tell you, the last couple of years I've given up the uh, the OC role, and it was night and day. It, yeah. And it just, yeah. it makes the team breathe easier because now you didn't have to go to the head coach and ask and, 
And the head coach, no matter what, subconsciously, he's going to gear practices or things towards his offense. Right. Uh, maybe no, he's not planning on doing it, yeah. but you, you, you cannot have dual role. I you don't believe be in it. you got to be a CEO, right, Ron? Almost yeah. like you're a CEO and you're delegating duties and yeah. then overseeing everything. You're micromanaging everything towards your, your responsibilities. And it's just, I have coached with coaches who are head coaches and, and you know, I've been one and I, I don't like it. And I think yeah. and nobody likes it. I'll tell you that. Nobody likes when a coach, a head coach is either a, a DC or an OC. And I'm sure Bill, you know, Bill is, you know, he's New rare. Rare. He's rare. He's yeah. rare. He's rare. But I, get, I bet you, if you talk to a lot of people, they wouldn't like it. But anyways, all right. So Pittsburgh, uh, Baltimore, we'll get off that. Um, yeah, you know what? They do deserve the respect that we give them right here. Um, sure. you know, the old runner, 11 and a half. I got them going over Ross. Again, yeah. the question marks I have them is the Pittsburgh division rival. I think that's a home and away. And then that Houston Texans, I think that's going to be a question mark. What do you got? Well, I, you know, I'm going under the total 11 and a half, like I said before. And I think a lot of, on top of the points I already made, um, I think Pittsburgh will be much better as long as Big Ben stays healthy. And, and a team that we're going to get to that I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. But I think Cleveland's going to be um, a formidable force this year. So uh, their division is going to be a little tougher to play against uh, this year. I mean, let's, you know, Pittsburgh last year, they had Duck Hodges at quarterback. You know, I mean, I'll do respect to him. The guy won an NFL job, but it's night and day when you go from Bink Ben to Duck Hodges kind of thing. Yeah, Mason Rudolph and, yeah. No, yeah. you're right. Speaking of the Steelers, it's still curtain. Um, you know, let's, uh, you know, these guys, they've been in trouble the last couple of years, right? Uh, they just had some, uh, you know, once, you know, your quarterback goes down, you got problems. And it's just, you, we've seen it with the Steelers uh, looking last year, ranking 30th. When was the last time you saw a Pittsburgh Steelers offense ranked 30th, uh, 29th in rushing? And you look back at you know, the Steelers, you know, the, the bus days and all that, there's no way in hell they would be ranking 29th in rushing, uh, 31st in passing, 27 in points. Hey, we know what the problem is in Pittsburgh. You got to get your quarterback healthy and you got to get him some weapons and you got to start running the ball because – you have a history of playing great defense, another 34 defense, Tomlinson, great head coach, um, you know, in looking at their uh, defense, ranked fifth. Here's a team last year, Ross, that went eight and eight, five and three uh, at home, three and five away, three and three in the division. Um, still respectable defensively uh, for a team that hit 500. Uh, yeah. fifth, fifth total yards against, uh, 14th versus the rush, third versus the pass. Now that one surprised me a bit, but uh you know, third versus the pass, and they tied for uh, fifth in points, um, uh, points against, and points against per game at 18.9. Yeah, and uh, how about first in sacks and first in turnovers forced as well, you know? Yeah. That helps. <laughs> it helps, and it also helps when it's Pittsburgh and it's November and it's minus 10, and you get a team from uh, Florida coming up or, you know, <laughs> it's a, a fair weather team. Um, but, you know, but that's, you, you know, it's like full college football, you know. You don't expect Wisconsin to be chucking the ball in December or November, right? Yeah. Uh, you know when you get to Wisconsin, they're going to be running the ball. That's why they have such great running backs coming out of there. Um, the same with Pittsburgh. You, you know when you're going to go in Pittsburgh, you're going to go um, in, in late uh, the schedule. It's going to be defense, and, you know, you're going to run it down to their throats. Now, looking at, um, you know, their uh, situation here, Last year, James Conner last year was our leading rush at 464. The year before, he ran for 973 yards. And the last time, do you remember called uh, the last time that 1,000 uh, yard rusher was in 2017, uh, Le'Veon Bell at uh, 1,291 yards. So um, you want to fix things on, on offense and get a running game. And, you know, like you said earlier in the broadcast, you know, a quarterback's best friend is a good running game because it takes the pressure off them, right? Um, looking at the uh, the schedule, Ross, now the over-under here is at nine and a half. I'll let you kick it off this. Did you want me to talk about the schedule first, or did you want to kick into the... Uh, well, a couple think? things. James Conner was banged up for a lot of last year, too, so we got to give him a pass there. But you're right, Ron. They underachieve uh, from a rushing standpoint, and especially when you look at their offensive line. It's pretty darn good, um, if you, on paper anyway. And, uh, you know, that, that – let's put it this way. If they're able to run the ball with the defense they have, that's a lethal combination, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, Pittsburgh's always had great offensive lines. Villanueva, Wisniewski, 
pound seed, the cash flow farther. Um, man, talk about a good uh, offensive yeah. line. And, um, um, and, and the other point I would make is their schedule. Strength of schedule is uh, fairly weak. I mean, um, yeah, you're, you're looking at somewhere in the two formulas I use in the top eight easiest. Um, so if this big thing is Big Ben, you know, um, if he stays healthy, I, I don't see how this team doesn't win at least 10 games this year. Yeah, so. no, that's the key. Ben's got to be healthy. And um, now looking at their schedule, now I got them winning, um, believe it or not, Ross, I, I got them close to 10 games. Yeah. Like it's almost right on the number. Yep. Um, they got, just like Baltimore, they, they're, you know, you got a lot of history with that franchise, so you're going to get some primetime view. They got four primetime games this year. They kick it off uh, Monday uh, night, September 14th, against the New York Giants, um, you know, at New York. So that's going to be a tough one. You know, yeah. New York, New York is New York. No yeah. matter what, it's prime time. It's Monday. Opener, season opener. Yeah, it, yeah. I got a question mark there. It's just, there's no gimmies. You know, there's no gimmies there. Now, prior to their bye, they got a bye week eight. Prior to that bye, they got Cleveland and then at Baltimore. So division game, you talked about the last, uh, you know, last uh, seg- uh, kind of podcast we talked about, the division sandwich, right? Um, those are, winning in the division is very, very tough. Um, three of the last four games for the um, Pittsburgh Steelers at Buffalo, at Cincinnati, and then the Rivers and the Colts, and then at Cleveland. So um, not a, you know, you know, not no KC in there, no New England, but still at Buffalo, which I think is going to be a good team this year. Um, but the Indianapolis three, is going to be a much better team this year. Yeah, absolutely. But the thing is here, the schedule is not helping them. Um, with three road games uh, of the last four games. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, again, it goes back to Big Ben. And here's the thing, Ron, um, and I'm going to be a little bit comical here when I say Big Ben is not uh, a quarterback that keeps himself in the best of shape in the off season. You know, you look, yeah, uh, and that's probably a lot. When you get up there in age, right, Ron, if you're not – in tip top shape, you're more prone to injury. You know, the guy, uh, his belly's hanging out. looks like we could tap his belly button and get a keg of beer out of him, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's my big concern with, uh, um, with big Ben. Yeah. When you get older, you ROT type thing. And you, and, and you see it all the time with the older veterans, um, athletes, not just football. You know. Well, look at Brady, right, Ron? I mean, he keeps himself in unbelievable shape. Um, you know, yeah. There's a reason why he's lasted this long. You know, the, 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 there's these special athletes out there. I call them the Doug Flutie guys. The, the Doug Fluties, they, they just, they, that's all they're, they get up and they, they got a baseball hat on, they're ready to go. Yeah. You know, and then they're just athletes. And that's, that's what they live for. They live to, to, to play the game, to train. Uh, and, and once you get older, you sort of lose that. Like, you know, like I, I know from, you know, playing a lot of hockey like, and, and in the rec leagues and all that, you lose that interest. And I can just imagine um, as a pro, um, you hear it all the time with the offensive linemen or, you know, the defensive linebackers. Running backs and linebackers to me in football are the two mentally toughest positions because those are the two positions where uh, you bang the most. Okay, linemen and D-line, O-line, you bang, but a short distance. You know, helmet to, you know, hopefully not allowed helmet to helmet. But think about this. When a running back is seven yards – in the backfield and the linebacker seven yards uh, from the D line, that's 14 yards running head start that at an impact high collision that, um, and I see it with co- coaching uh, players, high school players that uh, running backs, you can see it in their eyes when they had enough and, it, or they need a break or they're sitting out of practice. And I tell you, man, it, it's a very, very uh, linebackers too, very tough position. Uh, you, you can see uh, sometimes when we're coming back on the bus, the ice packs, you know, it's always the, the, yeah. the, the running backs or the, uh, the linebackers with the ice packs coming up. But Yeah, if I could add, you know, we talked about Lamar Jackson. We talked about Cam Newton. Uh, you brought up that Cam Newton is not like he used to be. His leg, well, you know, that's just a modern-day NFL quarterback right now that runs RPOs, that, that takes off because of his mobility. And, and eventually at the NFL level, that will catch up to you because – uh, you take a beating in the NFL, nothing like you would in college. And um, 
And we're seeing, and plus the fact now you're getting into your 30s. And that's why I think, Ron, when I, nothing against Lamar Jackson, and I want the listeners to understand that. I think he's a, a great young quarterback. But I see a similar path with him. Um, I just don't know. When you keep running your quarterback like that on design runs, let alone when he creates on his own, when uh, a pass play breaks down, that's unsustainable to me. Sooner or later, that's going to catch up to you. And, and again, on the, at the NFL level, you know. Yeah, you make a great point. And the thing is, in the NFL, um, there's a lot of smart people, and that's what they're paid to do. And now that you've given all these defense coordinators a year of tape on how to stop Lamar Jackson, um, it doesn't get easier for them. It's no. going to get – like people are getting a game plan. And like I said last time in our podcast last, uh, last week, um, it's going to really mess up a lot of practice plans that week when you're going to face Lamar Jackson because it's going to impact the scout team. And, you, again, you might have to put a running back at quarterback. And, um, and now that people – um, you know, it's like the Steve Spurrier did, you know, the, when he used to throw the ball or Chip Kelly, you know, people used to game plan and once eventually they, 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 they were able to slow him down. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I would look at the tape more than they played Buffalo last season and, and the bills, look, they had a great defense to start with, but they held him to 40 yards rushing when he was just killing the league at that time. And, uh, they just played disciplined football. You know, like you said, the ends didn't crash down. They stayed at home. And, uh, you know, again, it's easier said than done, Ron. You know, you got to have the athletes, too, uh, to combat that. Yeah. Um, I got Buffalo. I got Pittsburgh winning um, 10 games this year. And that's on if, if, if Big Ben stays healthy. If he doesn't, then all bets are off. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you're going in. Put it this way. My, the, the money management practice I'm going to use with Pittsburgh um, is not going to be the same money management I use on another team. Um, you know, the, to me, you, you there's know, too much unknown there. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So it, it either be a pass or put some beer money on it. All right. Yeah. We're 47 minutes into this podcast. So we're going to go right on to Cincinnati. Um, now Cincinnati tough, tough sled in here. 26 ranked offense. Um, the one bright spot, but he's gone now was Andy Dalton. That was, you know, on offense, they were 19th in passing. 30th uh, in points uh, for and against, uh, sorry, 30th in points per game, uh, 17.4. So not a lot of points, but uh, 25th in rushing. They had uh, Joe Mixon uh, running for 1,037 yards. The defense uh, was not, uh, you know, oh yeah, brutal. 29th overall in defense, 32 versus the rush. They couldn't stop a nosebleed, as Bart uh, Scott would say. Um, you know, 21st versus the pass. Uh, 25th again points. Uh, yeah, it was just like, it, it, here's the good news. There's only up from now on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. uh, looking at the, the record, two and 14 from last year. And, you know, they, they, they got, they got, um, they, they got a quarterback who's uh, Joe Burrow is going to be the franchise here. And um, you know, obviously um, you're going to have to ease them in, but you know, you got rid of Dalton and there's no easing in. <laughs> Here's the ball. Go get her. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they, and that's that's you know they're gonna throw them right into the fire. And when you're a number one overall pick in the NFL draft, that's usually what happens. Um, the thing with Cincinnati using my my strength of schedule formula, very very intriguing, Ron, is the fact that um, by their opponents' win percentage last year, they're playing the sixth easiest schedule. But if you add up their opponents regular season win totals odds this year they're playing the eighth most difficult schedule so uh it's something to read between i i tr again trusting the bookmakers to set an accurate line which i always do um i i think i would lean more toward their schedule being a much more difficult schedule this year based on their opponent's regular season win totals and again joe burrow not a beneficiary of getting any on-field work to work with his receivers chemistry-wise during the offseason because of the climate we're living in right now. No mini camps, you know, uh, off-season workouts cut down to a minimum, if, if nothing. So it's going to be a little bit of a difficult ride, in my opinion, for the Cincinnati Bengals. I will say this. I mean, you mentioned Joe Mixon, and then they also – A.J. Green's coming back this year. Uh, remember, he was out all last year, which affected their passing game. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, Tyler Boyd's a decent receiver, and they draft this kid in the second round out of Notre Dame. 
Chase Claypool, who's got a body of a tight end but speed of a wide receiver. Yeah, Notre but Dame. got some guys, you know what I mean? But it's yeah. just a matter of, uh, you know, it, is it too much too soon kind of thing. Yeah, and the thing, too, here is uh, three of the first four home games to end the season. Um, look at this. They got Dallas, Pittsburgh, Houston, Baltimore. Hello. Yeah. Um, right. you know, th- yeah. Good luck with that, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think yeah, five and a half is way too high, you know, with all considered. I got them under five and a half. Yeah, I'm you with know, you. I got them winning three games this year. Yeah, I'm um, with you. And before the bye, so they got eight games before the bye, and I do have uh, a system against them. Uh, which is not a hard thing to do. <laughs> uh, when Cincinnati as a home underdog before by uh, owned four against the spread. So um, something to watch um, in that one there. All right. So let's get to the uh, Cleveland Browns and uh, looking at the Cleveland Browns here, Ross. Now this is going to be an interesting season, very, uh, you know, different kind of noise this season in the, uh, in the off season. Uh, last year, they ranked 22nd uh, overall on total offense, uh, 5,455 5, yards. 12th in rushing, Nick Chubb led the team in 1,494 yards. Um, 22nd in passing, Baker Mayfield's uh, 3,827 yards. Um, you know, surprisingly enough, Jarvis Landry was their top receiver ahead of Odell Beckham with uh, 1,174, but Odell did have 1,000 yards in 35. And the, the, the X factor to me this year for the uh, Cleveland Brown is going to be Kareem Hunt. Um, you know, he's, he had a situation in Kansas City. Hopefully, um, you know, he's, he spent time in the offseason working on himself or, or, you know, fixing whatever need to get fixed. And he came in with, to training camp, or he's going to come into training camp, with a great audit, attitude. And he's been probably, uh, OTA has probably been, uh, you know, uh, listening up and, and putting in the time. I think he could be a real a good X factor for this team um, coming this season. What do you think, Ross? Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, he was suspended for, I think, eight games last year. I'm not yeah. sure, but quite a bit, okay? Yeah. So it's hard to get in a groove, you know what I mean, Ron, when you're brought back in midseason and you were kept out of tr- training camp and all that kind of stuff, uh, or, or I'm, I should say once the regular season started, he was okay in training camp. Once the regular season starts, you're not allowed uh, with, with the team in any capacity. Um, when you're going through a suspension. Nick Chubb is terrific back. Uh, you know, Ron, we talked off air. This Cleveland team might have been the most hyped team we've seen in the last decade last year. Now you're not hearing anything about them, right? No. Uh, expectations aren't high. Baltimore's coming off that terrific year. Big Ben's coming back with Pittsburgh. It's easy to write Cleveland off. I think they're a real sleeper in this division. I really do. You know what? When you when I first did the um, the numbers here, I had them under uh, eight and a half, and then I listened to what you were saying last podcast, and I say, you know what? I, I respect you a lot, and I said, you know, Frost, what does he see here? So I, I dug uh, dig deeper into the uh, the Browns. You know, we talk about all the time identity. What's the identity? When we think Pittsburgh, we think Steel Curtain. We think running the ball. Uh, what is the identity of this football team? of the Cleveland Browns coming, you know, based off last season. They, they're very balanced offense and defense when you look at the numbers. Ranked 22nd on offense, ranked 22nd on defense. Um, you know, seventh versus the pass. Uh, the, the secondary of the Cleveland Browns is up there in the top 10. Um, they got some really good DBs. Uh, they're going to have to do a better job stopping the run. They ranked 30th last year versus the rush, and they, they averaged 24.6 points again. Now, Looking at their schedule here, Ross, to uh, open up the season, it's a, it's a tough op- home opener right here. Uh, they're on the road against Baltimore, and then they, they, it gets a little easier. They got Cincinnati at home, Washington at home, at Dallas, then at home to Indianapolis, and then Pittsburgh, depending on the Big Ben situation, at Cincy, and then the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Now, according to my stats, I have them either 4-4 four and four or 5-3. and three. Depending on, uh, again, I'm, I'm really big on that home and home against division rivals. Winning in Cincinnati, like Cincinnati, they're, you know, they're not going to win a lot of games, but this is one that they, it's, a, it's a winnable one, right? So I, I think um, looking at this schedule, and then looking in the second half, they got Houston after the bye, uh, and then they got question marks against the Eagles at home, and then at Jacksonville. You know, Jacksonville is not a gimme at Jacksonville. Yeah. Then yeah. at Tennessee – and then Baltimore, and then uh, Giants at Giants, which they can win, is a winnable game. And, you know, at the Jets, 
against a good defense in December. Could be a cold, uh, snowy day. It could be cold. We don't know. And then versus Pittsburgh. So the three question marks I have is at Cincinnati, at home to Philly, at Jacksonville, and then at uh, New York Jets. Aside from that, um, I'm right on the line of eight to nine right there. And the bookmakers, man, they know. They yeah. know. They, they're right at eight and a half, and they're like, okay, oh. what side of the fence are you going to jump? This one, yeah. the over or the under? I'm going to jump on the, over the fence. Okay? Are you? Yeah. Um, you know, you made it. You kept going at, at, at went in terms of their schedule. And, and that's a good point, Ron. I mean, uh, look, if Cleveland wants to be a legitimate playoff threat, they're going to have to start winning at those teams on the road. I mean, you're looking since 2011. This is a Browns team that's gone 11 and 61 straight up on the road. Wow. That's just terrific. And Target. last year, they finished 0, 0 and 6 straight up in ATS in their last six road games. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into that. And I think if they can win at least three on the road this year, they're going to easily surpass that number of eight and a half. Um, and I think that they could be a contender. Let's not forget uh, in the AFC North, I should say. Uh, let's not forget, Ron, last year, uh, one of, the, one of uh, Baltimore's two losses during the regular season was at home against Cleveland where the Browns blew them out, where they showed the potential they possibly can have. So uh, I really like this Browns team. The only thing that bothers me is they got to improve on the road, and Kevin Stefanski coming in as a new head coach without the benefit of a full off season. Again, yeah. we can, I can't – you can't um, ignore that in this day and age right now, Ron. Yeah, there's an old saying I used to say to our players, you know, preparation is not uh, building your wings when being thrown off a cliff. Um, you know, you got to be prepared and you need that prep time. And uh, not having that prep time is, is just, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> and I think as a yeah, coach, sure. knowing that he doesn't have it, that it's just, it's, um, it, football is, um, it's, it's like a chess game. And you're breaking down film on each team and every opponent brings, you know, that's why I love football so much, Ross. It's just the, the elements come to play, the type of team. You know, we talked about a 34 defense versus a 43. Are we going to face a cover one man team this week? We're going to face a cover three zone team this week. Um, you know, this is what I love about football. Now, about the Cleveland Browns here, um, I, again, I have them right between that line. Um, I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to make any predictions here because, to me, Baker Mayfield, I want to see you grow. I want to see if you've taken that step. And I like the fact that he came out and he said, you know what, I'm done talking. And it's and you know what, from a, you know, a professional point of view and an athlete in pride, there's, a, there's only so much you can say before you, people stop taking you serious. And, and you got to be like a leader. And that's one thing I look for in, in, in when I coach a football team or I look at football team. Who's the guy that's going to lead this team? Who's the guy when we're down two touchdowns? And which player is going to start rallying the troops on the sideline? That was Brady was really good for. You used to watch some of his, his uh, antics on the sideline. He would just, when he was behind, he his leadership really stepped up. And you saw it. Even, geez, even McDonald wouldn't even know what to say. He'd be hiding, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, I think that uh, Mayfield, if I can interject, yeah, Mayfield ahead, uh, has shown a lot of moxie. Even last year when he struggled a bit, uh, he's just got that toughness mentally ab about him. And he – for a guy that's only been in the league two years, he shows a lot of leadership. You know, Josh Allen, the same way with Buffalo. I mean, uh, you could say what you will about him, but if you watch the Bills enough, you know uh, this guy's got a lot of fire, right? He's the kind of guy you want to buckle your chin strap up and go to war with. Um, and I think Mayfield falls in that same category. I look for him to bounce back this year. I really do. To, I agree with you, Ross, but at the end of the day, does he win? Yeah. Like we look at Philip Rivers, do we look at Philip Rivers differently, even though he hasn't won? Um, you know, that's what I mean. When I look at a quarterback, the first thing I I I don't care about your tweets. I don't care about you know what your your press conference are. I look at your win loss record and I look how many rings you got, and yeah. and, and how many are you do you win? And that's unfortunately you look at all the quarterbacks. Philip Rivers is a great example. You know, you can bark all you want on the sidelines. At the end of the day. Do the people respect you and, and do you win? And you got to win. Winners win. Um, just one thing before we go on Cleveland and Ross, because we're hitting to the top of the hour. Um, three of their first four home games are winnable games. Um, you know, you look at week two to week five. So you got Cincinnati, Redskins, 
Dallas and the Colts, that's going to make or break if they're a playoff team to me, I think, in the first four weeks. And before a bye, I do have a great record on the Cleveland Browns before a bye, Ross. Uh, when the Cleveland Browns are at home before a bye since 2001, 4-0 against the spread. And going back um, a few here, and I got, I got one that's pretty wordy. But uh, the, the, the key to this one is they're going to have to beat Cincinnati in week seven. If they beat Cincinnati in week seven, I got an NFL football system. Now, the difference between a, a trend and a system, a trend is when one team does it, and the system is when any team's in this situation. Yeah. So when any NFL home favorite is coming off a two-game road stand before a bye, and they're coming off a division win, so that's what you got to look at week seven. If they beat Cincinnati week seven, that home favorite is eight and one straight up, seven and two against the spread. So uh, a nice little trend there um, to uh, to look at. And one last thing, Ross, before we put a nail in the coffin on the uh, Cleveland Browns. A nail, nail, right? Not L. Not, not a nail, a nail. <laughs> a nail. They, they face seven of the top ten defenses this year. So they got their work cut out for them, and uh, we'll see what's going to happen here. One last point. Yeah, go ahead. When we're talking about trends here. Um, I don't really follow – I don't really put a lot of credence in trends that much, team trends that is, unless it's, it falls under the heading of the same coaching staff. Cleveland opens at Baltimore this year. The Baltimore okay. Ravens under John Harbaugh have been terrific in season openers. As a matter of fact, their last four, they've gone 4-0 and straight up in ATS, and they've outscored those four opponents 139-20. to So – uh, that's something you can't ignore. I'm not saying I'm going to bet the Browns or the, the, the Ravens just solely on that. But if you're going to look at team trends, it's got, to me, in the NFL, it's the same head coach, okay? Uh, what they did seven or eight years ago when they've made three coaching changes means nothing to me. Uh, but this is one that falls under the heading of John Harbaugh, who's been there for a long time. Buddy, bottom of the tent, and you just knocked it right out of the park with that stat right there. That's a walk-off. That's a drop-the-mic uh, walk-off. That's a great stat, buddy. Awesome. All right, Ross, uh, that's that's the hour we've been uh, trying to reach. Man, I tell you, good thing I quit drinking, eh? <laughs> Here, three hours. But, crack the window uh, open after the Crack the, the window. Let's have air in here. But, yeah. no, what? Great show today, Ross. Um, you know, I, I – Anytime we start talking football, and the thing I love about what we're doing is we're not just talking stats. We're, we're getting right into the, the meat and potatoes of football. Like, we're talking, you know, the types of defense. We're talking about players, um, you know, the, the leadership. And that's what I think people hopefully will, will want to listen to. And, again, folks, if you're listening to us on the uh, Raymond Report podcast, along with Ross Benjamin, he's Ross Benjamin. I'm Ron Raymond. You can find me at atsstats.com. And where can people find you, Ross? They can find me at rbwins.com. As a matter of fact, Ron, I've uh, already previewed 28 teams and made a pick on the regular season win totals, 28 separate videos, all listed right there at the website. And remember, folks, you can get all the archives of this show by going to the OSGA uh, YouTube channel or going to uh, the Raymond Report YouTube channel. And make sure you subscribe, and you'll get notified uh, when we publish any of our new shows and also give us a like at the end of this video make us feel appreciated absolutely all right guys there you have it that's the rain report i'm ron raymond he's ross benjamin hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh, again you can find us anywhere you download your favorite podcast like they always say ross shop for value play those percentages we'll see you back next time here on the raymond report all right